Ladies and gentlemen, it is Wednesday, so you know what that means. It means OSA live on a Wednesday because it's 7.15. I'm with Ernie. I'm up at Wakefield. Ernie's at Coventry. Ernie, what are we talking about tonight? Uh, tonight we're going to talk about when you set up your saltwater tank for the first time, whether you want to go fish only or whether you have corals in mind. It's It really is an important thing to think about. So tonight's topic, fish only or saltwater grief. Peter, hit that intro, baby. Woo! One of the great questions of the multiverse is, do I want to go fish only or do i want to go a reef tank ernie how do you want to start this off baby the best way to go about this is what has drawn your attention to the hobby <clears throat> a lot of people for a lot of people it's fish you will see a clown trigger fish or say you're diving down in florida and you see a queen angel and you're like i want that in my house well if you want one of those two fish in your house you're not having a coral tank because they like to eat corals. Uh, if you get into the hobby because of corals and the fish aren't that important to you, then you go the coral tank route. It's, it's important that you know when you begin because if the first fish you get is a coral eater and you fall in love with that fish because saltwater fish are very intelligent, become pets. Well, either you're going to be feeding him a very expensive diet or you're going to have to rehome that fish if you want to go the coral route. I think what it comes down to is when you get into a saltwater tank, the biggest thing is we just want to make sure you can handle, you can maintain it, and it's what you want to do. A saltwater tank, I, tell, I try to tell everybody, it's a lifestyle. That's what a saltwater tank is. It is a straight lifestyle. It's a dedication. Now, once you've made that commitment, understanding where you want to go. Some people get into it because they certain species, which is a fish that they absolutely love. I will always love things like, Clown triggers, lionfish. There are some amazing fish only fish. Puffer fish, puffer fish are one of my all time favorite fish. When it comes down to a reef tank, you're pretty much deciding you like the including the most advanced ecosystem in the world synthetically, and you want to see like how you can do that. You're essentially like you're initially you're playing God when it comes down to a reef tank. You really are because you're mixing animals that come together actually never come together in the wild and you're bringing them together to make this incredible ecosystem in a little glass box you know exactly in this little glass box and that's a lot to comprehend around i also think all right so what, what do you want to start with you want to start with a reef tank first arnie where do you want to go with this you want or fish only i want to start honestly as we always do with the tank that's yeah. the most important part if you decide you want to go fish only, get the biggest tank you possibly can. I'm talking 150 gallons or up. Because a lot of these fish that aren't reef safe, that you fall in love with, these triggers and stuff, they all get a foot plus long. They need a really, really big tank. Now, if you're going to do a reef tank and you're like, oh, I'm going to get a huge tank, unless you are very, very wealthy, Filling that tank up with corals is going to take you years and years and years. Because the few colonies that do exist nowadays are in the three dollars $400 range. And you get a little frag and you put it in a 220-gallon tank, you don't even see that you put that frag in there. And corals do grow very slowly. So in all honesty, like a four-foot tank is a good starter for a coral tank. Gives you enough water volume to keep it stable, but it's not overwhelming when you try to fill it. As you say, I got a reef tank, and there's five little frags in there. It's not the most satisfying thing. And it's just, it's getting very expensive to fill a large coral tank. I agree with you. I feel that the new modern world, right? Years ago, we always wanted to go bigger. It was better when it came down to reef tanks. But now, I really feel like a four-foot tank is really as big as you really want to go. It gives you enough room for when you're growing out corals, you have that space, but it's not enough where it's over, right? In fact, we're seeing all ones become one of the most popular of all the reef tanks because of all the frags. 
And it really comes down to growing these animals and starting off from a little frag, growing it into a colony yourself. And it's also, I feel like it's better satisfaction. And when you're getting that satisfaction out of it and you're watching these animals grow, I just think it looks and does and it feels so much better as a hobbyist. It took me two years to fill my 130.4 and I work in Coral Disneyland. I mean, it took a while to fill a four foot tank. My 328 was originally a coral tank and it just, it got overwhelming trying to fill the thing when colonies were no longer available. You used to be able to buy huge colonies the size of my head for 200 bucks. Okay, let's go. Let's fill this thing up. That's just not the world we're in anymore. I also feel like that when it comes down to fish, when it comes to a reef tank, right, you are very limited on what fish species you're going to pick, right? Because you've been careful what's going to eat, what can fit inside that tank happily, what can live inside there. And also, when you're basing on a reef tank, you're basing it on the corals. You're not basing it on so much of the fish. You're more picking and choosing fish that kind of do jobs. Workers for that tank will look great as well. That is true. And the bright side, one fish everybody gets in this hobby because of is a mandarin. A mandarin is a great reef tank fish. Just make sure you have a top on it. Because believe it or not, mandarins like to jump. And mandarins are awesome. You just got to make sure it's a well-established mandarin or your tank has to be well-established. It's nothing we want you just getting into. That's something we really prefer you to be at like six months or more before you get into one of those animals. Now, when it comes down to the reef tanks, also the other thing is you're seeing all these corals. Figuring out which corals do the best for you. So if you're just getting into it, you're being overwhelmed. You see all of this and deciding which corals are going to do the best in your tank. And you kind of want to work your way up. You want to stop far probably from softies, from cloves, and kind of slowly move up from that point as well. You also want to make sure your lighting system, and Ernie was Todd and I talked about this uh, previous last week, about the lighting system, is the lighting system is the best for what you have for that size tank. Financially, it all kind of works out in the long run because if you do a fish only and you know you're doing a fish only, you can skip out on the lights a little bit. You don't have to buy the higher end lights. But for the money you save with those higher end lights, you're going to have to do more pro a better protein skimmer, possibly two of them. You need better filtration for a fish only system. Because as stated earlier, they get larger. And if you do puffer fish or trigger fish, when they go to the bathroom, oh my goodness, it is, they're going to the bathroom. So you save some on lighting with a fish only, but it's balancing itself out because you got to do more filtration wise with a large fish only tank. When it comes to large fish only tanks, say if we're doing a large fish only. Now, when it comes down to a fish only, deciding how we're going to set up. Are you basing it on a puffer fish, halcyon tusk? Are you basing this on triggers? Are you basing one of my all-time favorite fish in a fish only tank? And everybody always wants to shoot me, mono agentas. I love that fish in a fish, fish only <laughs> tank because they school, they look awesome, and they're hardy. You have to decide how much the filtration can handle and also basing that system on water changes. When you have a large fish only tank, you are crazy not to have a mixing station. That is something you definitely want because of all the waste. You can have a, you want to overdo the protein skimmer, right? So when we see a protein skimmer rated for 200 gallons, if we're doing a fish only, we want to do a protein skimmer rated for five, 600 gallons on that system. We're basing heavy water changes. Now, the other thing is when it comes down to a fish only, the question is, do I want to do rock or do I want to do a coral inca? Which one am I going to choose? I personally will always choose a coral insert before any sort of dry rock, live rock. And I'm going to tell you why on my part. I like the instant gratification. Now, is it cheap? No. So those coral inserts cost as much as a car. We've done coral inserts for four, five, six grand just they for the insert. More than live corals do. Yes, exactly. But it is done in one shot. The only problem is when it comes down to coral inserts, the amount of work that it takes to keep them clean. And I can show you tricks, especially the ones we've done in the field and how we do that. But that is a lot of work. But what I love about it is it is done one shot, and it looks amazing when it's set up. But the filtration, that life support system, you got to go big. All right? That is the biggest thing. You want to overpower and just have this insane 
monster filtration system. The other thing is to lighting. Now, lighting is not as important, like Ernie was talking about, on a fish only system as it is a reef tank. Well, you still want to make sure you got good lights. So whether I get into just something that has a little bit of a shimmer, but that's not creating too much allergy, right? Because we're doing a coral insert. We don't want this thing being jet brown all the time, and we don't want to do all, all that work on that's just keeping it clean. So that's another thing you want to take into consideration. But if you love fish and you want uh, more fish that you can get, I definitely suggest that. Also, I'm just throwing this out there before I, I bring Ernie in there. You can do rock, right? You can do, don't think you can't do dry rock or live rock, you can do it. But the issue is going to be that the cleanup crews are going to be snacks for all of these animals. We're just going to be like, you're just feeding us a buffet all the time. And that's what you're really doing. So the problem is this will always be one of the biggest issues is keeping this rock clean and under control. But know what? That is nutrient control that is doing water changes that is the overall maintenance and also that's what comes with having a fish only uh the filtration is very important i have every fish you mentioned plus about 30 others in my tank at home i challenge anyone to come to my house and find a speck of algae on the live rock in that tank there just is none I'm running two protein skimmers on that tank. It's on an auto water change system. It's changing out seven gallons a day. You think that might be a little excessive? The tank is spotlessly clean, and there's over 40 fish in there. Some of them are pushing 16 inches in size. There's also a four and a half foot more AEO in there. That's another huge waste maker. It can be done. Just the bigger the tank, the better, because these guys get huge. One advantage to a large fish only system is you can put reef fish in there. It's a huge tank. Tangs love huge tanks. Tangs love eating algae. Fox faces love eating algae. Rabbit fish are kind of iffy at being reef safe, but they're great in a fish only system. A rabbit fish chow algae. I haven't had a snail or a hermit crab or anything in that tank thanks to Fred in over two and a half years. Because they were in there, but when I brought Fred home, he ate all of them. So, so you guys know, Fred is a giant uh, Stars and Stripes buff. He's just monster, like 20-inch Stars and Stripes buff. <laughs> the other what, thing is – oh, go ahead. Another thing, if you do a fish-only tank with these large fish in it, you do not want to do a rimless tank. The problem with a rimless tank in these guys is – the covers for the rimless tanks are nets that just sit on the tank. These guys get big. They bounce into that thing. They're knocking it off, and they're hitting the floor anyway. And especially the puffer fish, they love splashing water all over the place. So you really either need – I don't run a glass top, but I have a canopy on it. The inside of that canopy is trashed, but it keeps the water off of the tank. I don't run the glass tops because I still like the gas exchange going on. That's just one thing to keep in mind. They jump and they do make a mess. When it comes down to Ernie's fish only, you guys also have to understand, there's like a mix too. There's fish onlys with done with live rock or dry rock mixed with corals. Now, the type of corals that we're throwing in there is like GSP, pallies, mushrooms. And really the goal is, yeah, is certain species of fish, I truly believe, need coral to feed off corals to survive things like emperor angels certain angels i definitely think need to eat corals throughout all the time to keep it going and then we'll use some of those type of corals for those fish to just snack on to mal on you'll see poppers just go through and chew on things like that and honestly that's like something you want to get into if you want to do that now are you basing these corals on the green scheme of how they look the bright colors no, they're just kind of in there to just be in there. But that's kind of like when you hit another kind of stage. That's something where you get into like maybe a cold coral tree or something like that. Something we really do not want in our reef displays. When it comes down to our reef tank, our reef displays, right? You're doing a, a water box 50.3. You're being picky about the corals you're getting into. But if you're getting into it, you see those bright colors on those corals. You like that it's thick with those blues. You like the fact that it looks like Avatar in real life. Then a coral tank, a true pink tank, is for you. And things like firework clove polyps are pure fire. Different types of humus, 
Uh, I love, I love different types of corals, uh, sinularias, and I, leathers. I think so. Leather tanks are some of the best looking and most fun to do tank because you're so successful. Over the years of playing around, I did find one coral that no fish will eat. No fish will touch this. You can have it in any tank you want, and that is a green hairy mushroom. Nothing will eat that. <laughs> and it grows prolifically. I, H- nothing will touch them. Other H- mushrooms, chow them down. Those green hairy mushrooms, nothing wants anything to do with them. The, and there's just certain corals I do. And the other thing is, too, I'm going to tell you, uh, you guys doing reef tanks, there is some coral – you will put in your tank that just will not do good in your tank. And it will do awesome in everybody else's tank. But in your tank, the happy equilibrium just will not be there for that coral. You can't get stressed about it. If it doesn't work three times, four times is not a charm, right? Just call it a day, realize what doesn't work, and let's move forward. That is, that is the God's honest truth. Everyone has a certain easy beginner coral they cannot do. For a lot of people with zinnias, Zinnias need nitrates in the water. A lot of us want very low nitrate systems in our reef tanks. Zinnias do not like that. They're one of the few corals that actually eat nitrates. So they like the nitrate range above 20, 25. In between 20 and 30, they thrive. And a lot of us run it at about 10. And that's just not good for them. I personally, I personally can't keep a candy cane slash trumpet coral alive, no matter what I do. And I've been trying for almost 30 years. I just different tanks, everything. I can't do it. So you gotta understand in the wild, you're having species of corals on an average reef. There's like three species of corals on that reef. You're taking all these species, you're bringing them together and you have chemical warfare. You have these guys attacking each other and crossing. You have five years that are just going to reach out, reach out and such fight, like reach out and just take out anything that's over there and you gotta understand these these corals they, they're not friends corals are not like hey buddy so good to see you again no they're like hey, hey buddy i'm gonna eat you i'm gonna take over your space and i'm gonna grow because that's how corals are they want to take over the entire stuff and anyone that's ever had gsp knows this if you ever put gsp on your rock in the middle of your reef you're like wow it's growing so well it looks so awesome guess what it does look so awesome until you see it go to the next rock and then you see like your hammer or something else and it just crosses over that and then you just realize what's happening zenia is a great one for that any sort of those encrusters are famous for that right if you're going to do gsp anyone knows we're going to well not anyone knows what we're here for but you're going to take that gsp put it on a rock Keep it separate from everything else so we get on the sand bed so we can't jump to the next one. It's still an awesome coral. I want you to get into it, but just don't let it overtake reef. The other thing is to say we do leathers. I love leathers, right? Leathers, I think, look awesome. They grow quick. That flow, I love that flow in the tank. But when you have, start having a decent amount of leathers in the tank, you will run into chemical warfare. Well, you will see some corals just, they opened up great, and all of a sudden one day, they're done. They're just not opening up because that leather is just taking over that tank. And that is just one of the things you get into. You have to decide when you're deciding fish only or a reef tank, where you really want to go with the tank and what's in your head. And sometimes I'm going to tell you this right now. I've seen a lot of people think they want to get into fish and all of a sudden they end up loving the corals so much more than they actually love the fish. And that's actually a really common thing that ends up happening. And you're just, as Ernie likes to say, you're just keeping water. And that's the other thing you got to decide what you want. Because when it comes to a fish only tank, you're really just on the nitrogen cycle, right? We're on nitrates, nitrites, ammonia. And also we are keeping an eye on pH. When it comes down to a reef tank, oh, we're adding so much more. Now we're adding alkalinity. Now we're adding calcium. We're adding magnesium. And then there's other trace elements in there that we could go above and beyond. How many people I hear about, oh, man, I don't know if the boron and my salt, my root salts, do I? That could go to a whole other kind of thing. But that's what you got to decide is, do you want to be a scientist or do you just kind of want to learn the nitrogen cycle? And you know what? Being a scientist for this stuff can be fun because it's challenging. And there's a reason why you don't see people having multiple reef tanks. Versus, like, in freshwater, we see a lot of guys have multiple freshwater tanks. 
when you're doing a reef tank, you're making the most advanced ecosystem in the world synthetically, changing the rules on how it works. And then you're like, okay, now I got to make it all work. I was saying that's usually where tank two comes into play. You have your first tank, and then you get your reef tank, and you end up with two saltwater tanks. Uh, what you were talking about with the leathers earlier, if you run heavy activated carbon, you can negate the chemical warfare. So if you want to have a lot of leathers in the tank with other stuff, you've got to run activated carbon. It, it does. It nullifies the poisons, that they're, the toxins that they're releasing. Why we're talking about it now? That's the other thing too. When it comes down to a reef tank, actually, you're gonna run into this fish only tank too. Biggest issue is you're gonna run into cyanobacteria. That freaks a lot of people out. Uh, anyone that's ever seen the red slime building up on the sand bed, it just it looks like it looks like red snots going across, and it literally doubles in size every day. First, it's like this big, and then it's this big, and then it's this big, and everyone's like, it goes away at night. And it comes back in. That's cyan. That's from too much excess organics inside that water column. And it usually develops in dead spaces, right? It's going to develop up and around the rocks. It's going to develop where there's not enough food to get into it. Usually that's a sign of more water changes, gravel vax. You need to do gravel vax. Um, whether or not you need a bigger protein scammer or flow. Flow is another one. Right, Ernie? Or overfeeding. Yes, overfeeding is usually what it causes it. overfeeding, and a lot of people don't realize amino acids cause this too. If you just start dosing something like Acro Power and everything has been great, and you keep ramping it up and ramping it up because your cores are looking great because they're loving the aminos, and then all of a sudden you get this enormous cyano outburst, and you're like, but I'm not doing You up those aminos, and you went too far. you got to dial it back down to where you didn't have that to begin with. Aminos cause cyanobreakouts breakouts very easily if you're overdosing. You know, that's excess of just excess nutrients inside that water column. Now, Amelia just hit us up. What happens when a coral overtakes the rock near other coral? Can you teach us to split them or something? LOL. I love how she ended with an LOL. Well, that's basically fragging pretty much. It's you got to remove that rock and... If it's spreading so bad, you got to make it on its own island in the sand bed. Otherwise, it can't. Otherwise, it's just going to continue doing what it was doing. Green star polyps aren't that hard because they grow on kind of a mat, and the mat you can actually peel, take the main part away, and wherever it's spread to the other rock, you can peel that off, and you're okay. Something like zinnias is a whole different story. You can do the same thing. Uh, this is going to sound horrible because you're not fragging the coral. You're actually killing it. But Aptasia X works great on the left behinds. Just once again, run activated carbon because when these creatures are dying, they can release stuff that you don't want in your water column. But you'll feel bad because you killed off a couple of those zinnia heads, but they'll grow right back again within a couple of days. So don't feel that bad about it. That's the best route to go about stuff like that. And you're going to find certain things that work for you and moving corals around to find out what corals do best. It's crazy, too, because anyone out there that knows is they bought a coral, they put it here, and it didn't do so great. But they just put it right here, and it did awesome. That's the other part that's going to be one of the toughest things is picking and choosing where those corals go that you get. Another big issue we run into a lot with the fish-only tanks is and um, if a fish-only tank with a live rock or a reef tank is – a problem that I'd rather deal with cyanobacteria all day long. Hair algae, and worse, even worse than hair algae, is bryopsis. But trying to control hair algae, that is definitely one of the biggest signs. Now, one of the things you can always do is I really like to run heavy uh, phosphor, right? So we use a lot of fuzz out. I really suggest personally a GFO, and if you can do a GFO reactor, that's definitely one of the strongest points. Because remember, you're using live rock in there, so when you have all that live rock, in there, it's great for the life support. It's unbelievable for the life support. But because of how it's stacked and everything else, you are building external nitrates inside that and phosphates inside there as well. Especially when it comes to dry rock. A lot of dry rock, especially in the beginning, releases a lot. I do mean a lot of phosphates. You run into the hair algae problem a lot more with the smaller tanks. And it's not a coincidence that the smaller tanks don't have fox faces and tanks in them. 
Box faces and tags do a great job on keeping that from the beginning. They never let it grow. The thing with hair algae is once it starts moving, if you can see it swaying in the water column, almost nothing will eat it. When it's just starting out, snails will eat it, scarlet reef hermit crabs will eat it. But the main things on a reef to keep the reef clean are the tangs and the rabbit fish and the fox faces, which are in the rabbit family. When you're running the smaller tanks, not only do you have a higher nutrient load going in because you're feeding the tank and it's a smaller water volume, but you don't have those grazers in there. It's There's a lot of fish out there that, you know, there's a fish called the lawnmower blenny. Do they do a great job on algae? Yes. Do they do as good of a job as a tank or a rabbit fish does? No. That's just, they're a smaller fish, therefore they can't eat as much. Detroit Hammer, I see a comment right there. So Detroit Hammer on YouTube just hit us up and said, two-sided tank with gyres and still dead spots for cyano, right? So, yes. So, right, you have two gyres, you got plenty of flow, but yet you still have dead spots. You know what that comes down to? And that's one of the other things is the initial setting for the rocks. Sometimes we create these awesome aquascape, but it's not necessarily the best for the flow, right? Because we've got to control flow inside of how we're going to get to those dead spaces. Sometimes we end up having to put more more flow in the tank than we even thought because of those dead spaces that are in there. Another good trick when it comes into the cyano, we also run heavy organic scavenger resins. Max Isle has been like our number one, but you can use anything that's an organic scavenger resin to pull out as much as possible. Obviously, your protein skimmer is going to come into huge play. And also, the the other great debate, I don't care if it's a fish only or a saltwater reef, right? And you're going to ask, everyone's going to differ, and I guarantee Ernie and I on two different levels, right? So this is going to thing. This is going to be one of the greatest debates of all time. I love sand in a, an aquarium. I love sand in an aquarium, and especially in a reef tank. There are some people that do sandless aquariums because they don't want to deal with the diatoms on the browning on the sand. That is always going to be a continuous problem. That's going to be something you're always going to be fighting for. I love gravel bags. Like, I think you should be always gravel bag in the sand. Now, someone else, a di another diet, would be like, don't touch the sand bed, right? That is going to be up to you. The only thing that I can say is when you commit, you commit to A or you commit to B. Because that is definitely something you're going to think. I like a nice clean sand bed. I don't like any shells in there. I like it to look as good as possible. And I do believe you get more beneficial out of the sand. Now, somebody, Ernie, how do you feel about that? My sand beds are spotless. I don't yes. I've never touch them. See? And that's what he's saying. Ernie's like, I don't touch them. And you'll have guys that don't even mess with the sand beds and they still look good. I just prefer it. I like, and that's the thing. You're going to go back and forth. Wherever it is, that's going to be something you're going to decide on you and what you're going to pick and choose, whether you gravel back those sand beds, whether or not you just leave those sand beds and you're just basing as much flow as possible. But I would definitely suggest sometimes if you can move some of the rock, be careful because anytime you move that rock, there should be tank established, you're going to go open a whole other issue, but as much flow as you can and as possible to prevent that cyano. I, at one time in my reef, was running two big dog powerheads. My 130.4 water box, I had two MP40s on it. They were blowing everything all over the place. I had dead spots everywhere. I moved those two MP40s to my 328, and I replaced them with five MP10s. And I have not had a dead spot in that tank since. Yes, I said five. There are five MP10s on a four-foot tank. My and you tank completely packed full though so there's coral growing everywhere to stop the flow and it was in order to get rid of all the dead spots i had to put five power heads on that tank that's another thing too so we'll see some tanks we start them off right so you start them off with two power heads as the corals grow the tank starts to become more mature in a couple of years down the line now you're trying to get more cyanide than you did before while well, you're feeding that food you're doing this you're doing that also now the flow is not as strong because those corals are starting to block that's when you have to come down to more flow and whatever you can do to get as much flow there as you can i mean i could go through different types of power heads uh a lot of some people will do heavier on the return pump that's up to you but however you get that flow in there that is the best scenario as you can now, I'm going to 
jump over to the fish only side is the life support system on a fish only side for us is a lot different, right? Because say if I'm doing a, now I'm talking about if I'm doing a coral insert, right? We're doing a coral insert in this tank, right? You got a big tank, just saying coral insert. I got a couple power heads. What's the problem? Well, in a reef tank or a fish only with fly rock or dry rock, you have all that bio inside this rock. This is part of your life support system. This is the great, this is the great, this is the great stuff, keeping it all that. But when it comes down to coral inserts, we gotta now treat that a little bit different because we have none of that media. So we have to build up media on the side. That's when we still get into, I mean, you can get into any story. You can put white rock inside the sump. Um, you could put bio balls, you could put, but you gotta go heavy on some sort of media inside the sump. And the other thing is to making sure you have a very large protein skimmer, but we have to make sure you know, another thing we'll actually do is when it comes to a, any sort of fish only with, now quickly this is officially with a coral insert, is running media reactor, where you'll get into different types of biomedias. Honestly, to keep those coral inserts clean, I do feel like those biomedia reactors in the mass style tank do work the best and we've seen the best out of that. I would not do that on a reef tank because we're using all this. Um, but that is definitely something we would have to do on a fish only. And a larger than normal UV sterilizer. I will always say this. If you are running a large tank, you are crazy, crazy not to run a saltwater tank on a UV sterilizer. That is, I'm telling you right now, if I could tell you to buy one thing, one thing that will pay tenfolds of what it is, buy an aqua ultraviolet UV store. I don't care if it's an aqua ultraviolet or an emperor aquatics, right? One of those two UV sterilizers is the single-handed best investment for anyone who's ever run into a protozoa problem or any issues like that. Do you know what the worst thing is? The absolute worst thing? I'm going to tell you guys right now. The most painful thing in this entire saltwater and reef hobby is you put all this time and work into your tank. You love you went and handpicked out every single one of those fish you start naming those fish and just one day you get a velvet outbreak and you you have to watch you have to you're watching everything die in 24 to 48 hours and you're doing the best you can and there's nothing you can do to stop it i can't tell you how painful that heartbreak is like that just is gut-wrenching it's the most, I don't want anybody to experience it. And yet it's something that some people say, I've never had a problem. I've never had a problem. And yeah, I know people that have spent, I don't, I don't even care. Like, let's, let's throw the money out of it. Even if it's thousands upon thousands, we're talking about the time, the love, the effort. I don't care if there's a reef tank or a fish only tank to watch every one of those animals that were in your care to just die. That is it. It's game over. You don't want to do this anymore. I'm telling you right now, to, to come back from that is so heartbreaking and so hard. Where a UV sterilizer, is it going to stop it? Is it going to prevent it totally? No, but it is one of the best chances, besides quarantining those fish, you have inside your display tank. And I'm telling you right now, hands down, I would definitely do a UV sterilizer. If you're thinking about doing a saltwater tank, invest in a saltwater, uh, UV sterilizer. Now, when it comes to an all-one, I'm not stressed about it. You know why? I'm going to tell you the other thing is, too. When you're doing all one you're not really getting into tank. The problems come with tanks and because you get one it's not it's not usually even the one right it's when you put the second one and that's when that tail whipping comes in and that fighting comes in and then it is game over and the biggest issue that you're going to run into is some of the top favorite tanks i can tell you right now anyone who's ever had a problem right it came from a powder blue it came from a powder brown it came from a hippo tank or some sort of other just like a random tank like a clown tank or something else like that or any Achilles on the planet. Oh, I, I think Achilles tank is going to cause a massive outbreak in your tank. You need to quarantine. Achilles need to be quarantined, strictly quarantined. And then it still might not work. One thing to keep in mind with these large fish, when you get into the fish only system, a lot of the reef fish, their lifespan is three to five years. If you get attached in three to five years, yeah. But these big guys, you're talking 15, 20, up to 40 years is how long these fish live. You think you get attached to your dog after 15 years? 
have a fish for 25, 30 years. They meet you at the glass as soon as you walk into the room every day. But you rub their belly when you're in there cleaning the tank. You get very attached to these guys. It's worth it doing everything you possibly can to give them the best environment possible. If you're just getting into a saltwater reef tank, I highly suggest, and you've never done it before, right? You've never done it before. I really like the all-in-one series. Between the 64, the 53 to really try on that. Because you'll learn so much on that, and especially when it comes down to alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, learning how to test. And you can control that environment pretty well because you're not getting small fish. You're sticking to gobies, firefish. You're keeping it simple, right? You're sticking to the kids' world. Once you've had a tank and you want to upgrade and you want to go more because you can still roll that, that's when I like four-foot tanks, right? Four-foot tanks are fantastic. If this was four years ago, I would say go big or go home, right? Go 125, a 150, a 220 when it comes to saltwater tank. I would not tell you to do that in today's world. I just, I, 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 unless you really, this is really what you want and you don't care and you're going to go into it. I just think that I see more people happier with their tanks at like a 130.4 versus I've seen a lot of uh, bigger tanks get set up. The problems go wrong and they just, something goes bad and everything wipes out. And it is the most painful thing ever. And I never want anything to go wrong, but things can go wrong very quick. Um, especially, it's just it's super painful. And I just feel like you're strongly better off doing sticking to that size tank. If it was a fish only tank, it's different. Not story. about is the 60.2. Oh, and 60.2. If you that's want great. a small sump tank, the 60.2 is amazing. That is a fantastic tank at 60.2. That is actually a really great tank. If you're going to go a fish only, okay, now I'm going to tell you go like a water box 180, 220, go to a, a bigger 220 because you're basing it on fish. Now you're going to be like, well, how many fish can I hold on a tank? You're going to laugh at me when I tell you this. I'm going to tell you like in 220, I'm going to tell you you're going to put eight fish in that tank. And you're going to keep it very not super heavily stocked. You're basing it on fish. They're going to grow. And I'm going to go from there. It depends on how much water changes and things like that. But you're just basing it on the nitrogen cycle. And I see that comment some people about chasing numbers. On a fish only, I do check pH, right? We do check pH. We care about nitrogen cycle but we're not chasing all the right parameters well. on a reef tank we have certain what we're shooting for right inside the tank depending on what style of tank is whether the tank's based on a softy with more belly fat lps's whether it's based on sps right we run average ernie what would you say average tank like you could run average numbers eight five alkalinity 450 calcium magnesium somewhere Anywhere between 1280 and 1400. Salinity is usually around 025, 026. Temp 78. Those are your basics. I'm just going through, guys. I'm going through right now. I'm just reading all the comments. Detroit Hammer is throwing a bunch of stuff out there. Um, I just, he's talking about uh, Detroit Hammer's got manual I removed cyano, is a waste of time. Slow and steady, I am down to just the one the one spot I will win. So, he's a cyanobacteria issue. He's been trying to remove it manually. Sometimes, guys, that's what you got to do. And it, you know what? You're going to keep doing it. Go ahead, Ernie. Have you used ChemiClean yet? ChemiClean works 99% of the time. It doesn't harm your corals. It, it works almost every time. You just have to find out what that source of it was so it doesn't come back. You don't want to keep using it. Same thing with Marison. And Marison's another product we use. We use Fritz Marison quite a bit to kill that acetyl bacteria. Uh, a lot of it is your fungus and mycin. That's actually what all those products are. And they work great, right? But if you keep – so you're going to do it, right? And then what's going to happen is you're going to get diatom bloom after that because the job of that product is to kill bacteria because that cyano is a bacteria. It's not an allergy. It's a bacteria, all right? So that product is killing bacteria, so you're killing other bacteria, so you do get a diatom bloom from that coming in there. And then what we'll use is the max out, use the organic scavenger method to help against that diatom bloom. But if you keep doing this over and over and over again, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to eventually not work against cyano. So we try to get you to, to not do it every time. We're trying to solve the problem. That's what Ernie's talking about. You can do it, but you got to solve the problem, what's causing it right away. Another advantage to a true fish only, as Scott was talking about with inserts, is you can use a lot of medications in that tank if you need to. 
because there's no inverts in there because they ate them. Correct. Out. So, in a lot you, of fish oils, copper in the system or not is totally up to you. I still wouldn't, but you can use tons of products like Marison and other products that normally you wouldn't use in a reef tank. They're fine to use in a fish only system. And that's the other thing too. When a fish only system, you have more capability, right? Fish get sick in your reef tank. You can't just use a copper medication. You can't do anything. You can catch that fish. The only thing else we do is we'll use our OSA metronidazole food. You can find it on our online cho- our website. We'll use that right on OSA choice or we'll use metro or things like that. But that is it. That's the only thing that you can get into besides having UV sterilizer. And it takes a minute for that to work. It does. Any, anything else you want to jump into? I'm just curious because I want to I mean, get into it. It's crazy you know, saying eight fish in a 220, but that's just me. All right, listen. I don't want to tell. Like, I'm trying to keep it like fair, right? I, I, I there is there is ten police out there. Okay, I am trying to keep it as reasonable as possible. Um, I'm gonna tell you, eight fish. Water what, change, guys. What you do is up to you. I'm just saying that's just what I suggest. It you depends on the water change. Now, when I say eight fish, I'm not talking like. Algae blennies. I'm not talking about firefish. I'm talking clown triggers. I'm talking lions. I'm talking angels. I'm talking got those it, fish. Got, you it, got, it, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got only, it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Like my favorite saltwater fish on the face of the earth is a golden puffer, right? Golden puffer is the coolest thing. And a Hawaiian dragon Maria. Those are my two top saltwater favorite fish. Besides, I like Mato Argentis swimming in the background. <laughs> well, a little bit of the fish. There they go, swimming around. And you guys might think oh, that's messed up. When you see them in a group, they look awesome. When the lights hit that silver, it's, it's almost blinding. They're I, cool. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Uh, quick, anything else? I want to jump into. Uh, I want to get into gift cards. I want to get into the Christmas week. I just seen. I think we covered most of the stuff. If anybody needs anything else, just throw it in the comments and we'll try to answer it. Always, guys, throw whatever you guys got in the comments. And also, if you guys got other questions for us, if you see a good comment in there, we'll bring that up as one of our topics. Anyone that doesn't know how this works, call water this week, fresh water the week after, and just keep switching, vice versa. But for right now, any of these products we talk about, any of the meds, all this is available on our OSAChoice.com website. Peter, hit that video for us, please. All right, guys, anyone out there, all you guys in there, if you want gift cards, you got to get them in now, okay? I just want to let you know, if you have any loved ones, make sure you tag them in a Facebook post. Tell them you want an OSA gift card. We got OSA gift cards. You can get them on osachoice.com. Go right there. It says gift card right there. You can just look it up. Those are available. They can buy them right on there. We're just trying to get everything shipped out as fast as possible. You have... To buy online, you have all day, tonight, uh, tomorrow. This is our schedule for Friday. Obviously, we are closed Saturday. Friday, we're going to be open, but for a very short time. I'm only opening the stores 11 to 3, except for Coventry. Ernie's going to stay a little bit later, but I'm telling you 11 to 3. Just in case he wants to get out of there, he's probably going to stay till 4 or 5, right? But I'm yeah. shooting... All right, so any Coventry will be staying open till five, okay? Eleven to five. Peacock and Wakefield, eleven to three. Guys, get your gift cards in. Also, you get if you have company coming over, you got to be of the family over. You got to make sure that tank looks awesome. So get whatever you got to do to make the fish tank look epic because you got to show it off. Everybody's got to love the tank. This is that chance to let it shine, baby. Let it shine. So make sure you get the gift cards. All of them are available online. Make sure you get everything else. Trends. 
Hannah checkers have been the hot stocking stuffers so far this year. Yes. So, if your loved one has a reef tank, we're fully stocked up on the Hannah checkers at the moment, but they are flying out of here. Hannah's all stocked up. And if you have anyone that out there that wants to know what to do for gifts, guys, the biggest thing we're going to tell them is don't buy you anything live. Like, that's what we're here for. We're here not to make it live. Make sure you get a gift card. And the other thing is to find stocking stuffers for that tank that you like, whether it's magnets, scrapers, cleaning uh, products. That's what it comes down to. And don't forget, we have plenty of merch available for stocking stuffers as well. Anything, anything else at all? Merry Christmas. Hope everybody has a happy holidays, and I will see you next week. All right, guys. We're getting out of here. Thank you guys so much for the love and support. If you haven't checked out any of the YouTube videos, guys, we appreciate it. Make sure you go on our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube, Ocean State Aquatics TV. Give us a subscribe button. We appreciate it. We just hit over 5,000 subscribers last week, and I'm, I'm grateful for it. You know, and we're so appreciative. We appreciate all you guys and all the work that we do. And we're just – we get to do what we love every single day, and I am grateful for that. So thank you guys very much. We're getting out of here. Have a happy holidays. Peter Dubin Ferrer, end here with the OSA retail videos. We'll see you guys later. Thanks, Al, baby. Keep on reefing, baby. Woo! Woo!